All right, everybody, today I'm going to be sharing with you my high fat carnivore meals over a five day period. Now, as some of you know, I did some tracking of my macros in February to kind of get a better idea of where I was sitting fat percentage wise. And I wanted to intentionally increase my fat to try to deal with some sleep issues that I was having. And I have had my sleep issues resolve since I changed my macros to really increasing my fat and decreasing my protein a little bit. So for five days straight, I took pictures of everything I ate, I weighed everything I ate, and I entered everything into chronometer. So I'm gonna be sharing all that information with you today so that you can kind of get a ballpark idea of what it might take to reach more of an 80-20 ratio on carnivore. I know for me, I thought I was eating high fat this entire time, about the first six months of my carnivore journey, but I really wasn't eating anywhere close to 80-20. I was probably somewhere around the 60% fat range most days. And I've noticed a big improvement in my energy, my sleep quality, and also just kind of my overall sense of well-being and mood by really upping my fats intentionally. So I wanted to share all this data with you today so that whether you are tracking or not tracking, whether you're more of a visual person um, and pictures of the food help you see you know, what these macros kind of look like, I wanted to lay it all out here today so that hopefully it can help you if you are thinking about trying a higher fat approach. One caveat that I will mention here before we get into the pictures and talking about what I ate is that I, I understand that tracking is not for everybody and I'm not really recommending that everybody needs to track but I think there's a time and place for it if you're someone like in my situation that just isn't feeling the best energy just isn't quite feeling the way you want to feel and you want more information it can be really helpful to put all of your data in for a short time period and then use that information to grow your intuition and help you recognize your body's signals even better so I also tried to take note while I I was going through this process of how I was feeling and I tracked my sleep using my Garmin watch as well just to kind of get as much information over this this almost week-long period as I could to see how things changed or improved. I'm also very well aware that tracking is not a precise science. It's very very difficult actually to estimate your own basal metabolic rate, the calories and energy that you're expending every day. It's actually very difficult to know exactly how much protein and fat and calories are in any specific food. There are these apps like Chronometer that, that give you good estimates based on USDA data and data from thousands of other people that have contributed. But at the end of the day, it's really just a guesstimate as to you know what exactly all of this works out to be. So I really took the approach while tracking to just get into this ballpark range and then observe how I was feeling. Does that make a difference in my sleep or not? At the end of the video, for those that are interested, I'm going to be explaining how I came up with the numbers that I input custom wise into this chronometer app to get my ballpark numbers. So how I decided how much, how many grams of protein I need for my specific height and weight, and then how many grams of fat that was to equal 80-20, because I know it's kind of confusing. And again, these are approximations. So that little math part will be at the end for those that are interested. Let's get into day one. So day one, I started out with my morning decaf. Now I drink Pete's brand decaf, which is water process. And I usually have a couple cups of this in the morning and I'm adding about two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream to this. So that's full fat cream. And this is a brand that I found at Whole Foods and it says low pasteurization temperature on it. So I don't know if that makes a huge difference as far as the enzymatic quality of this cream or anything else, but I decided to try it. I also add my iodine drop supplement. I use three drops of Lugol's 2% in the first cup of decaf that I have, so that's once a day. For my first meal, I had some grass-fed beef fat from my local butcher and I throw that in the air fryer and it's absolutely delicious. This was about 42 grams of beef fat and I paired that with some 80-20 ground beef patties, about 110 grams. 
For my second meal on day one, I had two of my 80-20 pemmican bars and I just published my tutorial and recipe for how to make these exact bars at an 80-20 ratio on my channel. So I'll link that below if you wanna check that out. But two of those made a really nice second meal for me. And then I was kinda hungry before I went to bed and so I did have one four ounce chicken thigh that was done in the air fryer. Again, it was really, really good. My family's enjoying all the foods that I've been making since I recently purchased this appliance. So my totals for day one were 69.4 grams of protein and 149.5 grams of fat. So pretty close. Again, we're not going for perfection here. We're going for ballpark numbers. Day two, I started out my morning the exact same way, two cups of decaf with my iodine drops in the first cup only, and then two tablespoons of the full fat cream for a total of four tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. My first meal of the day was pure fat. This was the air fried beef fat again, and I ate a total of 61 grams. Today we went out for Korean barbecue. This is one of Ben's favorite places to go. Um, he loves to get the full spread of Korean barbecue and I can eat carnivore there because they have plain brisket, beef tongue, and ribeye thin slice that you just throw on the, the little center grill there. It's completely unseasoned and it's all you can eat. So that's a place that we go a lot. But I brought my scale for you guys and I kind of secretly weighed everything that I ate there to give myself an idea of how much I took in. So in Chronometer, I just found the entry that made the most sense as far as you know the difference between brisket and steak that I consumed at the Korean barbecue and I had about 10 ounces altogether of cooked meat and so I just entered that in under ribeye steak because most of the pieces I had were pretty fatty and I was full for the rest of the day after that meal so that is kind of the bonus of going there is we go there in the afternoon and I'm pretty much good till the next day. So my totals for day two were 55.7 grams of protein and 135.6 grams of fat. Day three, same thing in the morning, my two cups of decaf with the iodine drops in one and two tablespoons of full fat cream for a total of four tablespoons. And for my first meal, I had some salmon sashimi. I actually split this up between two smaller meals that were eaten probably about one hour apart or so. Um, for, so this was a total of 210 grams for the first serving and then 90 grams for the second meal. And I added three tablespoons of ghee to my second meal with that to really up the fat content. And then I also had some pork belly this day for kind of like my third little meal. Three and a half ounces of pork belly, which is really nice and fatty. I put that in the air fryer and it's delicious. Looks like I had one more cup of decaf in the afternoon and I added one more tablespoon of cream to this. Really trying to get that fat content up because there was a lot of protein in the sushi that I had and not as much fat. So this day for the totals that I got, I had 86.5 grams of protein and only 139.2 grams of fat. So not quite hitting it on that fat macro and a little bit over on my protein but again not by a whole lot and i still felt good and it's still a pretty high fat content day four i decided to really up the ante trying to get this fat in early during the day um, so to my usual couple cups of decaf i added two tablespoons of ghee and i got out the little frother and started kind of whipping this up with the cream and that really is good and that is a really nice way to get a nice high bump of fat in the morning for my first meal on day four i had pork belly again this is really nice fatty pork belly and i weigh it once it's cooked and that was 185 grams for my second meal i had a combination of egg yolks which i have not been eating a whole lot of but I wanted to try again, just throwing some things in from a high fat perspective to see how my body tolerated that. So I took three egg yolks and added that to some 80-20 ground beef and that came out to about 196 grams, so just under 200 grams of meat with those three egg yolks added in. And that was really good. 
and that brought me up to wow a whopping 103.4 grams of protein a little high on my protein day four but i got 152 grams of fat the final day day five i had my new specialty coffee in the morning two tablespoons of full fat cream and two tablespoons of ghee per cup of coffee so that really gets you a good boost of fat in the morning i had pork belly again for my first meal but i added a few pieces of anchovy for some omega-3 and i had some of that air fried beef fat again which is delicious 1.2 ounces and then for my second meal i chopped up some beef brisket into cubes and put that in the slow cooker i had about 150 grams of cooked fatty beef brisket which was very very good so wrapping up day five at 62.2 grams of protein and 177.8 grams of fat so that is my five days of tracking macros and really trying to get a better idea of what that looks like on my plate and how that affects my body my sleep my mood all these kinds of things to really intentionally take in more fat for those of you interested in setting this up in chronometer which is the app that i'm using this is not sponsored in any way but this is just the one that i feel like was the easiest and gave me the most information i did use my fitness pal in the past but i like this one better so that's what i'm going to be showing you today how i set everything up and figured things out to get these numbers the first thing i did was try to figure out how many grams of protein i wanted to shoot for just again as a ballpark number so after doing a little bit of reading i decided on 1.2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight so for me my ideal body weight approximately in kilograms is 53 and so i took that number times 1.2 grams per kilogram and that comes out to about 63 grams per day so that's what i started with and then what you can do when you use this app is from your discover dashboard here you can go to more down to targets then click on macronutrient settings and you'll have the option here to input that information and so i started out using set macros using macro ratios at the top and then i went and input my grams here i have my setting set to grams not calories and i put in 63 grams of protein that i wanted and then it calculated based on the information that i put in, in the beginning my current weight and height and age and all those things what it thinks i should have for calories so what i did next was just kind of play around with different amounts of fat grams in this section here to see so let's say i put in 80 grams of fat that got me to a 25 74 percentage macro range and so let's see let's bump that to 90 grams of fat that's 2376 so let's try you know like 120 there's a 8118 so i just kind of played around with this until i got a ratio that i was happy with so 63 grams of protein to 150 grams of fat is an 84 percent to 15 percent ratio and i suppose they leave a little wiggle room for carbohydrates or i don't know exactly again not going for perfection just going for ballparks so that's what i decided to set it as so you can go in here and figure out based on how many grams of protein you want to have per day and then you can set that up in here so now that i see the percentages i want i'm going to go back up to set macros using and change that to fixed values and that's what's going to keep these settings in grams in the daily diary that you're going to track in chronometer so now that i have it set at fixed values 63 grams of protein 150 grams of fat then i can go out of here and go to my diary and then i can see here at the top this is what it's going to be showing me in terms of, of what I eat. So that's kind of how you can go in here and set this up with whatever macros or you know number of grams of fat that you wanna try to hit. And then when you're entering your food every day, you're gonna be able to see your percentages. Oh, I've got 50% of my fat in, or I went a little bit over or whatever it is. And so that's how I 
went about this and I'm really glad I did it because I got a lot of good information. This is really useful if you want to get more information and try to tweak things a little bit to see if a change in your macros changes anything in your experience on the carnivore diet. So I hope this video helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions and I will be talking more about this in upcoming videos and sharing different recipes with you guys. So take care. See you soon. Bye.